Hey, welcome back to the studio, everybody. Today, I'm going to be doing something a little different. Uh, I haven't talked about this on the channel very much, and primarily that is because my other two co-hosts don't watch the show, and so I tend to not get too deep into things that all three of us are not enjoying. However, uh, Succession, it's an HBO series that there's a really large fan base behind, and a lot of people have been anticipating this final season of Succession. Now, three episodes into the new newest season, there's a really big moment, and I watched it yesterday, and or, you know, when it came out. And it hit me different. Now, I don't think, I think everyone was impacted by this episode. Um, if you don't want to be spoiled, then I would suggest you stop watching now. All right, I'm going to get into spoilers. And I'm also going to be reacting to a behind the scenes um, that I saved for this video uh, of the creation for this specific episode because it was such an impactful moment. Um, out of nowhere, Logan, the father, passes away. And it was in a it was in a manner that's not um, built up and emotional as far as like preparing the audience for something that's coming. It also wasn't like a big spectacle like you might see in Game of Thrones, like with the Red Wedding. It was just real life. It was a series of events, normal life, conversation with kids on the phone. Next thing you know, they're getting a call from someone else and saying there's been a heart attack and they're on a plane. And he's dying. And and then he dies, and it's out of nowhere. They didn't prepare us. But the way it was filmed and the way this season, the way this show in general, tackles these everyday life uh, of these people who are in a, a not very common situation, being extremely wealthy and being extremely privileged, I guess, but having to deal with the relationship with a not very nurturing father and a very selfish father. So I'm going to react to this. Um, I'll give my thoughts along the way in the making of this episode. So let's just enjoy this together. I appreciate you uh, sticking around. Let's do it. Is he gone, Frank? I mean, uh, is he gone? I don't want to bullshit you, Captain. I think he went. I think he's gone. When Jesse told me that that was going to happen, I wasn't terribly surprised. I thought it made sense dramaturgically. And then when I read the script, I found it shocking and emotionally devastating. We didn't really have a death scene for Logan, and that was obviously intentional. We wanted to capture a feeling of death that people experience in the modern era of separation, of communication over phone and email. These things happen in all our lives with our parents or anyone you love, anybody in your life, and something happens and they're just gone. I think it's gonna have an extraordinary impact. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was saying earlier. I mean, it's it's dealt with in a way that you don't typically see in uh, series or in stories. And it was very interesting. It just kind of, it felt new. And I think the creators are very, uh, very introspective in the way that they play out the death of this very important character for the show. We were sort of told ahead of time before we got the script what episode three was going to be about, but the way that it starts out for Roman with the disappointment that dad's probably actually not going to go to his son's wedding. Are you going to make it at all? We got him some... Uh, it's crazy. Combined with That's having, the last time I talked to him. With Jerry, I feel like professionally it's the worst day of his life and Personally, it's one of the worst days of his life, too. What's going on, Roman? He has no idea how much worse it's about to get. Your dad is very sick. He's very, very sick. What? Being in that frame of mind for two weeks at a time is not healthy. <laughs> to some extent, this is just, you know, my job, and I'm trying to keep the emotional stakes up and put the character through that and then go home. But the problem with that is going home. Yeah, that was Roman going through that, but physically, I actually had to go through that. So I was sort of, it's this weird, disconnect of like feeling physically like I've gone through some sort of emotional trauma, but I haven't. I found it was better for me to pull out of it completely so that it could be fresh still, because like for me, staying in means that it dulls and it's not good. You are And it's also interesting the amount of weight that's on these actors' shoulders, because it's not just it's not just that they have to act as if they're they're losing their father you know, as as characters, but they have to do it over the phone. And how are you processing this as like, 
the man that you love and is your father, but also you have a very contentious relationship with, has died on an airplane and you're in a different location and you have to tell your siblings that uh, that he's dying or he's probably about to die and you have to deal with that and you have to process like they're getting on the phone with him and they don't know if they can hear him, but they're like trying to communicate that I love you, but also there's so much depth to these characters that you really feel it. I mean, you re- and the, the realness of the dialogue as well. They just don't know what to say. And this is a very powerful episode as far as just what real life can feel like, especially with the loss of a parent or someone close to you, you know? Are trying to live with and embody the death of a parent. It was hard. You know, one of the things about yes. this show, I time and time soon. again, I'll be given something that I think is, this is the limit of what I'm capable of as an actor. Here's my wall. And then you have no choice but to go through that. And this episode was one of those. So, Con, would you take care of that? Part? Con, yes, yeah. it's serious. Come here. I was taught a long time ago that you just have to accept the fact that your performance is going to come from all the other characters around you. If you're just open to what is going on, they think he's dead. That's and pretty when insightful. Sarah came in to tell me, and Sarah was a puddle. You know, that it was just like game over. You don't have to act. Shooting the episode, honestly, it was quite exciting because it felt high risk. It felt like the most exciting episode we'd shot because it moves in real time. From that phone call to the end, things have to become an emergency. In the planning of the shots, it felt to me like the camera had to be almost sadistically voyeuristic. It had to stay really close without kind of taking its eye off them because every time we cut away from the siblings, it seemed to let them off the hook. So we worked on this mm. idea of how could we keep the action as fluid as possible so that yeah so it's unflinching my love that's interesting point of view that like every time the camera goes off of a character they're kind of lit off the hook and they don't want to do that they want to keep the actors there that's that's it pretty insightful i like that concept tried to credit me with this but i think he was trying to be generous it was his idea kieran and i had spoken about i think actually it might have been kieran's idea and we thought what if we actually ran that whole sequence as one once we've done everything else and so when we came in to shoot i asked are we still doing that and he went oh good idea oh good to try to make it seem like it was my idea (laughs) very nice guy but that is what we ended up doing we shot like five or six days of the sequence bits and then we ran the whole thing as it turns out it's like a 27 minute long scene it was like a 28 page they did the whole thing in one take like continuous acting that's scene, crazy. I think which is very 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 long you know on a movie you'll shoot like a two-page scene in a day and we shoot on film so that hold meant- up they shoot on film I did not know that they shoot on film not digital that's crazy that's that actually adds a whole nother layer of the impressive nature of this because if they're shooting not just scenes but this whole emotionally heightened bit of the story for 28 pages of script non-stopping high intensity emotion just to end the camera guys just going around filming it and they're shooting it on film that's like a ton of film and you have to get that right because if you you can't just constantly do retakes because you have a certain amount of fi- that's wild i did not know they they shot this on film that's that's unnecessary but I like it. I like it. It's hipster. We can only shoot for 10 minutes and then the camera needs to be physically reloaded with the new roll of film. So the camera operators worked (laughs) on this idea of basically hiding rolls of film around the set and hiding a third camera body doing super fast reloads so that one camera would always be running so they wouldn't have to reload at the same time. It was us doing like a one act play on a boat in several rooms with background actors with lighting everywhere with three cameras and it was unlike anything I'd ever done before and it was extremely exciting we just did the one and i think a massive percentage of that ended up being in the final cut i think today's the day suddenly episode three he's gone and when you've removed that one element you're going well where's the conflict the idea of it not happening at the end of the season but but happening in an early or mid-season episode. You take all the the places you'd expect such a kind of humongous event and play the exact opposite of that. And I thought that was just a brilliant, brilliant idea. And that's what I felt. That's what I was saying at the beginning. It's like most people would try to make a spectacle of this man's death because the show's called Succession. So the 
end of the season, the final season, or the maybe the second to last episode of the season, you notice he dies and there's a big spectacle and we lead up to it. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, in episode three of the final season, he dies and it's out of nowhere and it catches everyone by surprise the same way it catches characters by surprise and the same way it catches people in real life by surprise. I think it's it's it was a very good choice and it's off the beaten path and I like that. I like being creative with storytelling like this. We don't see this a lot. There's a couple of sort of factors that play into where Logan's death falls in our narrative trajectory. One is a sort of base one of like, oh, maybe it'll surprise people. Oh man. You know, I am not immune to such thoughts of wanting to keep the show exciting and fresh. I think much more prominent was the feeling that if we're going to do this, we don't just want to see people crying and then have a funeral and be done with the show. There you go. We want to see how a death of someone significant rebounds around a family. The sheer Good choice. of that character in his presence. One can't help but associate that with Brian in his presence on set and as such a huge gravitational force around which our creative work over the past few years has spun. When you're playing a part that is removed in that way, yeah, it has an effect on you. You, you feel, hang on, this is one of the greatest pieces of work I've ever been involved in, and suddenly it's no more, but it's also, it reflects what our existence is about, because we're here for a time and then we're gone. Dang. I was very nervous to tell him, you know, because there's lots of anxieties about whether it's the right creative decision, and there's anxieties that someone who I love working with and has been at the center of the show will feel rejected on a human level for not being in it anymore when he's been so central to the whole thing. Here's to us. When you work with the genius of somebody like Jesse, it's always sad when, you, when that comes to an end. There's no question about it because you've had such great respect. We're out of here. He took it like a total <laughs> pro, and he was professional and decent and kind and enough to make it yeah, a pretty good meeting, but a sad and significant one. It's going to be hard when the public see that he's gone in episode three. I think they're going to, have, I think they're going to find it tough because they've lived with Logan for so long, so yeah. they, they're going to miss him. He's not wrong. <laughs> yeah. So I, I definitely am going to miss Logan as a character. Uh, it, he wasn't my favorite character in the show. I think Kendall might be my favorite. Um, but Logan has been, it's kind of like the hinge, or, or I don't know, maybe the maybe like the comforting base of the show. Because it's like, he's the father, he's the one in charge, and everyone is like fighting him, and he's even fighting everyone else, and trying to assert his authority, and also come to grips this whole this whole show has been him coming to grips with the fact that he is getting old and he can't be what he's always been. And now it's hitting the sto how it's hit the story and he's gone. So everyone has to be what he's been fighting for them not to be the whole show. I thought uh, out of everything, it took me by surprise, but I thought it was very creative. It struck me in a way similar to the Red Wedding did. I know I, I mentioned that in Game of Thrones, but almost deeper than that because I expected... I, I almost expected there to be a sudden death in Game of Thrones, but this was just, it just felt so natural and real and real life that I haven't seen a show kill off someone as important so casually like real life feels when someone dies. So it was very well done. Everyone acted great and I was just blown away. I'm blown away by learning that they shoot this on film and that they shot like that whole emotional section of the story when they find out he's dying. They're talking to him on the phone, walking around the boat, all in like one shot. They did takes, but one sh one long 28-page section of the script they just ran through with multiple cameras. That's pretty wild, and that's very interesting cinematically. It keeps the actors at a heightened state of emotions through that whole section of the story, and, uh, and it, it edits together really nicely. So let me know in the comments what you thought of, if you're a fan of Succession, what you thought of this episode, um, what you think of the story, if you think this is a good move to kill off Logan in episode three, and if you are captivated by uh, the emotions of all the characters as well as just this season 
finishing up the show, if if this season has grabbed your attention thus far, or if you feel like you're disconnected at all. Let me know. Just I just want to hear your thoughts in the comments. I'll interact with you there. Subscribe to the channel. Stick around, and we talk. Me and my uh, other two co-hosts talk about movies constantly. Um, so subscribe to the channel, watch more of our videos. I'm sure you won't be too disappointed. And thank you so much for watching this one. Like the video if you would, and we'll see you in the very next video that's going to come up right now.